And I feel like my relationship with God, after I realized that he's good and he's real, right? Yeah. I really experienced him kind of similar to how I am with my kids when I go to somewhere like Dave and Buster's or Chuck E. Cheese. And when I bring my younger kids to Chuck E. Cheese, depending on their age and their maturity is like how far away from them I let them get with me still being able to see them. Example, if they can like follow instructions and say, hey, stay at this machine, I'm gonna go over here with your sister and pump some quarters. If they're mature, I'll give them a little bit more money. And I feel like that's our relationship with Christ at the beginning right? Christ is always going to give us enough. God is always going to give us enough tokens for how much he trusts us. And so for my 15-year-old, I'll give my 15-year-old about $15 in a Dave and Buster's knowing that he's going to be gone for about 15 minutes, but he's always going to have to come back to daddy to get more tokens. And the the representation that I want to have for tokens is grace, right? And Mm. so every morning I have a routine of going back to my daddy and getting more fun tokens, AKA getting more grace and re-agreeing with God's opinion of me. Because here's the deal, if the only thing that I accomplished by coming on your podcast today and speaking into these men's life was to get them to agree with God's opinion of them just a little bit more, I have yeah. won. Like, like this is the greatest investment that I have made today is to get men to agree with God's opinion of them a little bit more. And so back to my routine, every morning, they call it daily bread. I repent every morning, right? I repent every morning. If you're a man and you're watching this, nine out of 10 of us struggle with porn. I, I do not struggle with porn. However, me going to a gym and a woman being in yoga pants and they're going to, especially around here, yeah. they bend over in front of you, yeah. right? And if my mind goes to picturing them naked, it's the same as me cheating on my wife. Yeah. So I know, just knowing that, because I go in the gym every day, right? Yeah. I'm going to relate to you men. I sin every single day. And so I have to go back to my daddy. And yeah. I say, daddy, would you forgive me? Would you give me grace for today? Would you allow your Holy Spirit to rest upon me? Yeah. And would you give me direction? Right. And it's kind of like the analogy with with my kids with tokens. I want to give them enough as how much I can trust them. But hear me when I say this, y'all, you will never be so mature that you don't need to get on your knees and talk to your daddy every morning. So just disqualify that you can check in with God on Sunday and everything's going to be all right. He's not he's not that type of dad. He's a good dad and he loves us, but he's a jealous dad. Like he wants us to need him. And so if we just get back to dad every single day and say, dad, I know that I'm incomplete, but I know through your son, Jesus Christ, I'm forgiven and and I'm empowered through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So God, I thank you. I love you. Forgive me, empower me and lead me. And it's real tactical. It's yeah. really simple. I don't need to over-spiritualize it for yeah. you. But I hope that analogy with the father and the son or the children in an arcade really yeah. paints a picture of how elementary and simple it is. But God God is a God of order. And he just wants us to be number one. So if yeah. we just wake up and we make him number one, he's going to put favor on our life. Yeah. I, I love that because the simplicity, one, but two... It's that obedience of following what God's formula is. I talked about earlier that it says all things work together for good. So everyone out there will be like, everything works together for good. And it's like, but it's for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And it's like, and how do we know we love God? Well, he says, if you love me, the fruit of it is obeying my commands. And so, so many people will expect the fruits or the freedom that God has for us, the grace that he has for us, the, all these different things by without oh i'll get in his word when he's good to me or when he does this and it's like hey man god gave you the blueprint right in front of you right now Mm. that hey if you're like oh i don't know if that'll work for me i'm like well when was the last time that you repented each morning got into his word right it's like faith comes by hearing Mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of god says faith in two different ways praying in the spirit Mm -hmm. is increased and and hearing his word his spoken word and his written word that Mm -hmm. he speaks to you from And I'm like, if that's the two ways you grow faith, when was the last time? I just was with David Green with you, and he said uh, one thing he said for however many years. He's old. He's like 82. So it might have been a lot of years. He had never gone a day without reading his Bible. And Pete came back from that, and he's like, I started day one of the next 80 years of 
reading my Bible every day. But like what you're saying, I think the simplicity is so good because when I really look at every person that's whining and complaining about why God isn't doing something, like, well, one, he told you to believe. So we're already not doing that. And these are practical things that they can do every single day to mm. to walk in this freedom, mm. not just have one experience. Because I'm sure at 11, you had an experience. Mm. And because of circumstance and being young and you know all the different reasons out there, you chose when you went to college to just not follow what God was saying. Really? And look at what it riddled you with. Mm -hmm. Trophies on earth that'll melt away and be mm -hmm. worthless. Mm -hmm. And you were stuck with anxiety, depression, yeah. feeling worthless. Bro, I know many people out there right now that if they won a Super Bowl, they would have felt good longer than you did. <laughs> I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Bro, if I had my best game in my hometown, hometown game, everyone I know just saw that I was awesome, you at least could have gone down and partied with all the people and been like, yeah, I'm yeah. take pictures with me. Mm -hmm. And you were feeling that bad. That's what it gave you. Yeah. That's insanity to me. And so, you know, I, I think that those are all great things that you did. Look at how much it also is influencing people. And it mm -hmm. shows who you are. God had created you to achieve greatness. Mm -hmm. End of story. Yeah. Just not apart from him. Yeah. And so I think that that's why it's so important is that how many of us, me, all the guys out there, have actually woken up every day, repented, and gotten in the world.